your screen there. Uh, you can uh, make yourself available to that. And as I said, that we are watching that screen as well so that uh, we can know what you're saying and what you, you know, what you got posted up there. If you want to say hallelujah or whatever, <laughs> send your praise reports or however. Okay, just feel free. Just just enjoy the Lord tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise right now. I give you praise. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, we welcome you so have your way oh have your way today come on can you sing that with me come on sing that with me holy spirit we welcome Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. So have your way today. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. So have your way. Just declare this with me. I'm hearing this in my spirit. Tonight is my night. Yeah. Tonight is my night. For an encounter with you. Oh, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Yeah. Tonight is. 
Sing this, sing this. I'll never be the same. Come on. I'll never be the same tonight. Yeah, come on. Tonight, oh, I'll never be the same. Yeah, I'll never be the same tonight. Tonight. Now listen, the Bible says that when we decree a thing, it should be established and the light of God's favor shall shine on our way. Now, this is what we're doing. We are making a declaration. We're saying tonight is my night. Tonight is my night for an encounter with you. We're going to have an encounter with the king. As a, as a matter of fact, it's already happening right now. And you're saying, I'll never be the same. As a matter of fact, right now, if you're dealing with some kind of sickness or disease, I want you to lift your hands up right now. I know you're watching this computer screen, but I want you to lift up your hands and receive the presence of the Lord. Because Jesus is here, and tonight you're going to get healed. Tonight that pain leaves. Tonight you get a different result. Come on. Tonight, I don't care what the results is. I don't care what the diagnosis was. Tonight you get different results. Come on. I don't care what the I don't care what the what the cycle has been. It may be in the cycle in your family of sickness and disease, but it's not gonna be that way tonight. It's not gonna be the same tonight. I'm telling you, it comes to an end tonight. It comes to an end tonight. It stops tonight. Oh, I hear the Lord saying even now, leukemia stops tonight. Who is that dealing with leukemia tonight? Because the Lord said it stops tonight. There's someone that has been dealing with leukemia. And it's been a cycle in your family. And the Lord says it stops tonight. It stops tonight. It will not go to the next generation. That curse is broken tonight. Come on, if I were you, I would just declare that tonight. It stops tonight. Yes, come on. Tonight is my night for this miracle. Tonight is my night for my miracle. Come on, grab hold of it. Oh, sing it with me. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night for a miracle. Yeah, come on. For a miracle. Oh, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night for a miracle. Yeah, for a miracle. You just tuned in to your miracle. I'm not the miracle. This broadcast is not the miracle, but your healing, your healing comes from him. Tonight, you just tuned in to your miracle. Now, I hear the Lord saying someone has been dealing with some tremendous migraines. So, Lord of the most that have been here, the Lord says that some of you have been dealing with some migraine headaches. Uh, it's been brought on by stress, but that's leaving you right now. As a matter of fact, even as I'm talking right now, the pain is leaving. Now, I want you to uh, do me a favor. If, the, if that's you, whatever the Lord is revealing right now, if that's you, I want you to just put it in the chat box. Hey, that's me. 
hey I just received my healing the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony watch this now as you declare your healing as you declare your victory watch what happens it sets off a trend it's like a domino effect you're just encouraging someone that may be watching the same thing you're watching right now mm. so as you share your testimony they get encouraged to believe God and get their miracle tonight 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 oh tonight 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 you know it was an old phil collins cut he just simply says tonight 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 <laughs> oh, and I'm telling you, I'm hearing that. Oh, tonight, tonight. What you've been waiting on? What have you been waiting on? What have you been expecting? Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night, oh yeah. I receive from you, my God, my King, yeah. Oh, I receive from you tonight. Yes, I believe you, God. I believe you, God. I believe you, God. Oh, I believe you, God. I believe all things are possible him that believes all things are possible to him that believes all things are possible to him that believes Lord Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands, lift your hands and receive it. Lift your hands and receive it. Lift your hands and receive it. Whatever you're dealing with right now, just lift your hands and receive it. 
receive your relief receive your healing whatever is dealing whatever you're going through whatever you're dealing with just receive your healing right now just receive it by faith just receive it by faith my goodness <clears throat> I just see so many physical healings right now. Just receive from the Lord. Just receive, just receive from His Spirit. Receive from his spirit. Receive from his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. So let a baba basta da kalalala. Ile la bonde la baba sto da bobo sto da be histerobo. Ile na na mama usti di bide da baba basto to bobo ti di bide onde da ba. Come on, I feel something happening right now. Just receive it. Just receive your change. Just receive your healing. Just receive your freedom. Just receive your release. Receive your release. Yes, I hear the word release. I hear the word release. Release. Receive your release from God. The captives are being set free tonight. Those who are in prison are being released tonight. Release. Freedom is coming to you now. Freedom is coming to you now. Freedom is unlocking the cage tonight. Freedom is unlocking the prison door tonight. Some of you have been in prison in your mind. You have been in prison in your mind. You have been in prison to your past. You have been in prison, in prison to your past hurts. Come on. Freedom is setting you free tonight. The Bible says it is for freedom that he has set us free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is, there is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is, there is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Because his presence is here, you're free. Right now, in this moment, because his presence is here, you are free. So receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Declare it, declare it. I am free. Come on, declare it, declare it. I am free. Oh, declare it. I am free. I know it don't look like it, but you gotta declare it. I am free. Come on, whatever happens in the natural happens in the spirit first. Come on, declare it. I am free. I am free. I am free. 
From the chains that bind me, I am free. Come on, you're free. You're free. You're free. You're free from every torment. Oh, you're free now. I just heard the Lord saying right now, someone, someone has just been freed from lupus. Come on, if that's you, just lift up your hands and receive right now. Matter, matter of fact, the Lord says, walk out of it. That lupus has held, held, has held you captive for years. Come on, the Lord says, walk out of it. Walk out of it. It has imprisoned you for years. The Lord says, walk out of it. I am free. And in your mind, you're thinking that if I walk out, is this going to just trip me up? I'm, I, the, the, the chains of it still on me? No, you got to understand. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Understand the revelation of that. Whenever, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, every chain, every cage, Everything that represents bondage or captivity must bow to the name of Jesus. So come on, walk out of it. In the mighty name of Jesus, just walk out of it. I just hear the Lord saying, walk out of it. You've been set free. Walk out of it. Yes, you can. Walk out of it. You're free, you're free, you're free. You're free, you're free indeed. You're free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, you're free right now. Come on, you're free. Come on, you're free. You're free. And I break the lie right now that tells you otherwise. I, I break the lie and I curse that lie that says something opposite of the truth. The truth is, in this moment right now, you're free. You're free. Father, I bless you. I bless you. <clears throat> I thank you that there is freedom in this place. I thank you there is freedom in this house. Thank you, Jesus. There's freedom in this house. Glory to the Lamb of God. There's freedom in this house. There's freedom in this house. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. We honor your presence. We honor your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I worship you right now. In Jesus' precious name, thank you for healing so many of your people. Thank you for healing so many of your people right now. Thank you for healing your people. Thank you for setting the captives free tonight. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Now, I don't want to say if the Lord has healed you, 
because I believe that he has. You have a praise report, I want you to put it up on the chat box here, or you can just send an email to me at Brian, Brian, B R I A N, at newwininternational.com. I want to hear your testimony. <clears throat> or if you want to put it up on our testimony page on our website, you can do so as well. You could do that as well. Hallelujah. You can do that as well. Glory be to God. I want to talk to you tonight from the word of God. <clears throat> uh, something that has been, like, as I said, I've been carrying this and been walking this out uh, for several months now. Uh, and in prayer today, I felt a strong release from the father to share this tonight. But I also felt an urgency from the father to share this. I seen a pattern uh, by the Lord. And uh, for those of you, as I always say, um, that have been following us and uh, listening to the different messages that the Lord has given me, um, you know that um, I spoke a word entitled, I spoke on a word entitled, uh, Sowing in a Dry Place. And as, as I was praying today, the Lord began to bring that back up to me. But but he was telling me that uh, that it was very important that his people understand the urgency, the urgency of rebuilding his house. Grab your Bibles and turn to Haggai chapter one. Many of you, the Lord has called you to either build or rebuild his house. And just for a thought for us to focus on, um, I, want, I, want us to, I want us to think about this. I want us to focus on this thought here. Rebuilding the ancient ruins, or <clears throat> it's time to build, it's time to build, your life depends on it. It's time to build, <clears throat> or we can put it, bring it down to a personal level. It's time to build my life depends on it that's our thought of focus for tonight it's time to build my life depends on it Haggai chapter 1 is a very very powerful powerful chapter and chapter 2 is very powerful uh, but we are going to look at some verses here but then we're also going to go to uh, uh, the book of Ezra. Okay. <clears throat> Look at verse one. I'm going to read this out of, I'm going to read this out of the New King James Version. Okay. In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month of the word of the Lord, excuse me, of the, of the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, the prophet to Zerubbabel, the son of Shatil, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be build, built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your panel houses and this temple to lie in ruins now therefore thus says the lord of hosts consider your ways 
you have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. <clears throat> he who earned wages, earned wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go to the go up to the mountains and bring the wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for me or you look for much, excuse me, but indeed it came to little. When you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins. While every one of you runs to his own house, therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth withholds its fruit. For I call for a drought in the land and the mountains on the grain and the new wine and the oil on whatever the ground brings forth on men and livestock and on all the laborers of your hand your hands then zerubbabel the son of shatil and josh uh, and joshua the son of jehoshaphat the high priest with all the remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the lord their god and the words of haggai the prophet as the lord their god has sent him and the people feared the presence of the lord then haggai the lord's messenger spoke the Lord's message to the people saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shatil, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. On the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King, uh, King Darius. Now, it's very interesting here because I want to go to, you know, and keep your thumb there. I want to go to Ezra. I want to go to Ezra. If you read the book, if you, if you read the book of Ezra, You will see, you can connect this uh, prophecy of what Haggai was saying um, at that particular time. As a matter of fact, Haggai was a part of the rebuilding of the house of the Lord that's in the book of Ezra. Haggai was named, uh, was, was named one of the ones that were helping to build the house or rebuild the house of the Lord. But the Bible says, uh, the Bible says uh, uh, in Ezra uh, chapter one, it says, now in the first year of, of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord, uh, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be, uh, f my, excuse me, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation through all his kingdom and also put it in writing saying thus says cyrus king of persia all the kingdoms of the earth the lord god of heaven has given me he has commanded me to build him a house at jerusalem which is judah who is among who is among you all excuse me who is among you of all his people May his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. And whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, besides the free will offering for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. 
Then the heads of the father, father's houses of Judah and Benjamin and the priest and the Levites with all with, with, with all whose spirits God had moved arose to go up and build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all those who were around them encouraged them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with precious, uh, uh, precious things. Besides, all of that was willing, uh, willingly offered. King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his gods. And Cyrus, king of Persia, brought them out by the hand uh, of Miradet, uh, the treasurer, and counted them out uh, to Sheshibazar. Sheshibazar. Shesh, Shesh, okay. Woo. Shebazar. Shebazar. Okay. <laughs> the prince of Judah. This is the number of them. 30 gold platters, 1,000 silver platters, 29 knives, 30 golden basins, 410, 410 silver basins of similar kind, and 1,000 other articles. All the articles of gold and silver were 5,400 uh, and 400. Okay? And I uh, said, so all these Shabazar, Shabazar, Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> Took with the captives who were brought from Babylon to <clears throat> Jerusalem. So now, um, as you read through Ezra, they begin to go to work now on rebuilding the house of the Lord. Okay, uh, they uh, got what they need to begin to, you know, all the materials and, uh, you know, all, all of the silver and the gold and all this stuff to assist in rebuilding the lord's house okay and so now as the rebuilding of the lord's house was going forth if you read in chapter uh you read in chapter four that there was a resistance uh to uh the building okay there there were some um there there were some uh uh um um Trying to, think of the, trying to think of the right word here, adversaries, thank you. There were some adversaries uh, uh, that um, uh, these men uh, of Judah um, encountered while, while they were rebuilding the house of the Lord to the point to where um, the Bible says that, um, that the, the rebuilding process came to a standstill. Everything stopped because of all this resistance. You read in chapter four, you will just you'll see the whole you know whole story, and I would encourage you to do that. But if you read in chapter five, the restoration of the temple or the rebuilding of the temple resumed, and this is where Haggai comes in and begins to prophesy what 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 we just read in chapter one. OK. And so at, at it was at a point that to where that the uh, that the work was going on, then it came to a stop because of the opposition. But then here come Haggai and Zechariah and they begin to give a word of the Lord. And because of the because of uh, them going back to rebuild the house of the Lord, the work began again. And so this is where we uh, get this uh, pick up right here where Haggai is saying um, that the Lord was saying that, she, that the people are saying that it is not time to build. OK, the people were saying that um, uh, the time has not come, that the, the time has not come, the time that the Lord house should be built. In other words, because of opposition, because of the opposition, they have came to a conclusion that uh, maybe this is just not the right time. Maybe this is not the right time to build the house of the Lord. Maybe we missed it. OK, maybe we missed this, uh, <clears throat> missed the uh, missed the word or maybe maybe we made a mistake here in doing this. And so here this is where we pick up in Haggai chapter one here where he says the word of the Lord came and he says that um, 
He says, that, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your panel houses and this temple lie in ruins? In other words, what he was saying was he said that he said, are you telling me, are you telling me that it is just time for you to just to be comfortable? Is it time for you to just focus on what's important to you while the house of the Lord lie in ruins? OK. And so the Lord said, consider your ways. In other words, he said, you need to think about what you're doing. You need to think about what is important. Now, here's where it gets interesting, because the father gives this word through Haggai saying, I want to identify. I want you to look at something. Now, when you begin to consider where you are, consider your ways and begin to think or begin to kind of, you know, step back and and kind of evaluate some things here he was saying now i want you to look at something here he says you have so much and brought in little and many of you uh that are watching right now you have sown so much you have <clears throat> given and you have given and you have given over and over and over and you have brought in little okay the bible goes on to say here that he says you eat you eat but you don't have enough. <laughs> All right. No matter no matter how much you eat, there's still you still don't have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. OK, then he goes on to say you are you earn wages, you work, you get paid. And you put it in your bag, but the bag is filled with holes. Now, now many of you are right now perking up saying, okay, now he's talking my language because it seems like I'm working and it seems like I'm doing all this stuff and I'm not getting ahead. So in essence here, the spirit of almighty God is saying here is that you're doing this stuff here. You're doing all this stuff and you are, you are doing the, you know, it seems like you're doing the right thing, but you keep coming up short. And I'm talking to somebody tonight because you have felt like you have done the right thing. You have done everything that you were supposed to do. You have, you know, you have given, you have saved, you have, you know, you're working and you're, and you know, you're <laughs> putting in the hours and you're earning wages, but you're still not getting ahead. Come on, I'm talking to somebody tonight. You feel like that you have, you just have not made any headway. And so God here begins to um, uh, give the reasoning why it seems like you're not getting ahead. And so he says here, now the Lord says here, the dust says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Now, the first time he told me, he said, wait a minute, consider your ways. Now, let me break it down to you where you are. Now, I want you to consider your ways. He says, here is what you need to do. He said, you need to go up to the mountains you need to bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. And so, and so this is, this is what, this is what, you know, this is what this is, is that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound uh, right or it doesn't make sense, but it does make sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense what God is saying here, but it does make sense. He said, like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I, I can't get ahead here. You mean to tell me that you mean to tell me that what I need to do is <clears throat> I need to go get some wood and I need to go to the mountain. I need to go get some stuff so we can build your house. So what he's saying here is, is that your life is connected to your life is directly connected to the word of the Lord that has been spoken. All right. Many of you have been called to build. Many of you have been called to plant and to build or to rebuild. Okay, this is how this connects with Isaac. And the Bible says that Isaac was in a time of famine. Okay, there was a severe famine, and 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 Isaac, the Lord spoke to Isaac 
and his wife and told him, you know, to to plant there. I want you to stay right there. I don't want you going anywhere else. I don't want you moving anywhere else. I want you to stay in that dry place. Mm -hmm. Now, let me remind you that God said that whenever he wants to prosper you, he will put you in the dry place. And so many of you have been called just like Isaac to plant or to sow in a dry place. And so his life was directly connected to his obedience to the word. And many of you have been called to build. Many of you have been called to build or rebuild the house of the Lord and is directly related to and connected to your life. So what I'm saying tonight is that as you build, as you are obedient to the Lord, as you are obedient to the Lord and what he's telling you to do, you will see a divine reversal to what's happening in your life. In other words, you will begin to pick up momentum where it seems like you're not getting ahead you are going to be in acceleration mode, all right? You are going to be in acceleration mode. Why? Because now I have considered my ways and I'm changing my focus here. And this was the issue. The issue was the people felt like because, you know, we felt we faced some opposition, you know, we come on, get some stuff. Maybe it's not the right time to build. And many of you stopped too soon. You stopped too soon because you had some opposition or you had somebody tell you no. But I want to tell you what the Lord said to me. Wherever, you know, whatever, well, wherever you have heard no and what, whatever the situation was that you were told no, God says yes. I remember God saying this to me in Ohio that, that, that wherever, uh, uh, wherever religion has told you no, whatever, what area he, that, that religion has told you no, God says yes. And so many of you right now, you have been in a place of frustration, but God says, I simply want you just to consider your ways. I want you to understand the urgency of this. I want you to understand that what you do, your obedience to what I called you to do, is directly related to your life. See, understand about Isaac. It was not the seeds were not important, although they were. Him sowing the seeds were not important, but they were. It were they were important. <clears throat> but the main thing is the main thing, the main thing that was so important for Isaac to do was to plant in the place where God told him to plant. See, Isaac could have sowed seeds. He could have sowed seeds in any place. He could have planted in any other place. As a matter of fact, you know, that I believe at that particular time, Egypt, Egypt was, 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 was hopping. You know, um, uh, Egypt, was, Egypt was hopping and and they weren't going through a famine. And so it would have been so easier for him to just bail and run. And, and the Lord said to me in prayer that many who have been called to build, many who have been called to 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 build his house or to or to uh, do something very specific for him uh, have have uprooted themselves and ran. They have uh, moved to a better place because they thought in their minds that uh, it was better to build there. And many of you, many of you have been running. I saw it in prayer. Many of you have been running to a place where it's prosperous and you say, oh, I will plant there. And God has specifically told you, I want you to plant here. I want you to plant in this place where, uh, where it's definitely a famine in the land. <laughs> he said, he said, now I want you to plant here. He said, I want you to plant in this. I want to, I want you to plant in this dry place. Well, God, I don't understand that. Ain't nothing happening here. I need to go where it's happened. I need to go where I can be successful. I need to go where I can get some money. But let me tell you something that <laughs> there is something that is much more greater 
than money. There's something much more <clears throat> greater than success. Because here is the truth. Here is the mystery. That as you lock into what he has specifically told you to do, then those things will come. Here's the scripture to that. It says, it says in Matthew, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Watch this now. And all things, all these things shall be added. What was the all things? Jesus was dealing with about those who were being concerned about their life, what they were going to eat, what they were going to drink, what they were going to wear. And he said, all these things will be added, but you must seek the kingdom first. What is he saying? He's saying that my father has a specific assignment, kingdom assignment for your life. And in order to see that thing, the added things, you must first put your focus on what the father wants. And so this is where we missed it. We have sown much. Oh, my goodness. How many times have we been in services and, and have, have, um, have, have sown seeds and God did not move on us to sow the seed? How many times that we have done things uh, thinking that this is the remedy? This is it here. This is all I need to do. But God is saying here that you can never get away. You can never get away and get just and move away from seeking me first, seeking my kingdom principles or my kingdom purpose first. <clears throat> and so what we have done is we have tried to get the things, all things that shall be added. We we try to come up with our logical thinking, how to attain those things. And this is where Haggai came in and said, you say that it's not time to build. Come on. You say that it's not time for that. In other words, in in the order of the in, in the order of importance, you have placed what you need or what you want above the kingdom purpose for your life. And so this is what Haggai was saying that you have said, this is not time to build. And so, so it is, it is, it is through our actions. We have said to God, God is not time yet. I know I have a call on my life. I know what I'm called to do. I know what I need to do, but you know, these things got to get done first. But no, God says, no, if you could consider your ways today and put what I want, put what is important to my heart first, then you will see the things that you have been trying to reach or you've been trying to get or the things that are needed for your life. And so the principle has not changed. It has it, it has not changed. It, it, it just as it was in the Old Testament here, it was the same in the New Testament. Jesus brought the same principle here. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. OK, seek first him. See for seek first. What is on the father's heart? What is it? I'm calling you tonight. <clears throat> I'm calling you to revisit the thing that God has called you to do. I'm calling you to the place where you have ran away from. Where has God called you to plant? Let's start there. Where has, where have God, where has God called you to? And you said, God, I will not go. God, I will not go because, you know, because of this or that. Many reasons. But what has God called you to? Where has God called you to plant? And that you have ran away from. And, and, and it is evident because you're still bringing in little. There's still not enough. You're still not filled. Mm -hmm. You're still not warm. <laughs> you're, you're, still, you're still, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> All right? You are you are still earning, but losing. Earning, but losing. And so there's a call from heaven tonight for you to get back to the place to consider your ways. Your very life depends on now. I'm not talking about life or death here. <clears throat> 
you know, in the sense that you don't do it, you die. What I'm saying here is everything that represents your life, every area that represents your life, in order, in order to see that thing, you got to see what he sees. You got to see what he's looking at. You got to see what's important to him. God says, how long, how, how long will my house lay in ruins? How long will you stand there and just say, not now? How long will you say, well, not now, God? This is not the time. How long will you say, well, God, you know, my, my, what I want to do is, is, is more important. And once I do that, God, then I will do this. Once I, once I can accomplish this, God, then, then, we'll, then we can dis discuss about, you know, what you want. And the question tonight, God is asking, how long? How long will my, my house lay in ruins? How, how long will my purpose, my heart, <clears throat> my will, my answer, how, how long, how long must it not be, how long will, uh, must it uh, not be fulfilled? Whatever it is, you got to understand, whatever God has called you to, you are the answer to that problem. <laughs> God sent you here as an answer. God sent you here as an answer. Think about this. Think about this now. Think about this. You and I not fulfilling our call, not walking in uh, and, 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 and being uh, and <clears throat> coming to alignment with the Father or being obedient with the, to, the, to the Father. Uh, <laughs> When we don't do that, when we don't do that, it's like a question without an answer. It's like a question without an answer. Mm -hmm. It's like a question without an answer. And so, we are the answer for that problem. And the more and the more that we wait, not only we suffer for it, no, we suffer, but that thing suffers. But I tell you, the Bible says that God will not strive with me in all the ways. In other words, I'm telling that 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 God is not gonna wait on us. Hear me, God is not gonna wait on us for what he wants to get done. And sometimes we kind of have this attitude well, you know, uh, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm special to God. Yes, you are. We are special to God. But God is not going to wait on you. God will find somebody else to do it. The more, the more we mess around, the more we play around, the more, you know, we jack around, the more we keep telling God, well, you know, God, you know, yeah, you know, I hear you, but, you know, just give me just, you know, a little bit more time for this. And, you know, the more we play around like that, God will find somebody else. I mean, I want you to understand the, the, the severity of this. And I felt this in prayer this morning. <clears throat> I felt this in prayer. You know, and, and, and the Lord was speaking to me. He, he, he said the people got to understand how, how, urgent is, how urgent this is because this is directly related to their life. That you can still be in this place of not having enough, still bringing in little. And listen, <clears throat> we read it. We read it further. We 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 uh we we read um we read the rest of the verses at, at the top of this. God says, I brought it. He says, Look, he said, You you look for much, but indeed it came in little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. So what you did have, he blew it away. And watch this now. He says, why? He said, because, says the Lord host, because my house is in ruins. While every one of you runs to his own house, <clears throat> my house stays in ruins. While you are still <clears throat> going after what you want to do, my purpose, my call for your life, the very thing, the very thing that I have called you to do, the very assignment still lays undone. Mm -hmm. 
and he says because my house that is in because of my house that is in ruins while every one of you runs to your house therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth will hold, withhold its fruit can you imagine living under an open heaven but yet not getting a drop of rain you can live under an open heaven you can live under an open heaven and not receive one drop of rain this is what he was saying here he says the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth withhold its fruit so there is no rain and there is no fruit in other words the rain comes watch this now the rain comes to bring forth the fruit out of the ground. So there's no rain, there's no fruit. Both are with hell. Mm -hmm. He says, for I have, for, for I call for a drought on the land and the mountains on the grain, <clears throat> the new wine and the oil on whatever the ground brings forth on men and livestock and on all labor of your hands. <clears throat> Everything stops producing. Everything that you try to do, it won't happen until you come in line. And for many of you tonight, I mean, this is, this is like, it's, all, it's like a warning. <clears throat> it's like a warning. The, the, more, the more you say, not now, God, the more you say it's not time, God, the more you say that, the more <clears throat> nothing will produce. The more it will be frustration, the more, the more confuse, <clears throat> confusion and stress and, <clears throat> and worry. I mean, all of this stuff that don't even have to be. Why? Because of one decision, one choice. And I'm telling you today, God says, I want you to consider your ways. What has he called you to do? What has he called you to build? Don't believe the lie that it's not time. Don't believe the, you know, who cares? You say, you, you, many of you say, well, God, I don't have the money. I don't, listen, <clears throat> listen. God says, I, I didn't never ask you to focus on the money. He said, I want you to focus on me. Sometimes we stop and don't move because we don't have everything that we need. <clears throat> and God says, I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you to move when you get this. He said, no. He says, I want you to move on and now. And as you go, it will be provided for. As you move, things will move. As you move, things will move. There, <clears throat> what you need will be added. What you need to accomplish this will be done. I love one of the, the greatest picture of this is the movie. Um, what is the name of that movie? Um, uh, Evan Almighty. Evan Almighty. And I love the way they did the uh, the series because the first one was Bruce Almighty, and the second was Evan Almighty. Bruce Almighty was 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 Jim Carrey the character wanted the power, <clears throat> okay? Or he, you know, he didn't want it at first, but he, you know, he began to use use the power to uh, for his own gain, for his, you know, <laughs> to to make some things right in his life. But then the second one, perfect example. Evan Almighty had his great career, you know, was running, uh, running uh, for office, and everything was going perfect. Had his, had a perfect house, you know. Had I mean, nice place, all this stuff, and all this. I mean, had like just the way he wanted. But then he had a God encounter. <laughs> he had a God encounter. To where uh, Morgan Freeman, of course, playing the character of God, when he said, I want you to, he said, you know, I want you to build this ark here. 
and he found every reason to say, you know, now nah, you, you know, it ain't me. That ain't me. That ain't me. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not the one to do it. Every reason in the world. But here was the interesting thing out of that whole movie. And, 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 and after you have listened to this mess, I encourage you to go back and watch the movie again. See it through a fresh eyes of revelation. No matter what he did, no matter where he went, his purpose followed him so morgan freedom gave him an outfit to <clears throat> to wear to to build this <laughs> build this huge arc right <laughs> and he kept you know no matter what he did he he you know there was one scene where he was like i'm not wearing that i'm putting on my suit he actually walked out of the house thinking that he still had his suit on and he was naked <laughs> he was naked and so he said okay all right i'll see how we're gonna play this and so he puts the outfit on, puts his suit over it over now. Imagine you have to see it. But and many of you have already seen the movie. But he got the suit on this big old outfit, right? <laughs> and he's walking to the place. He got to his his career now, to his job. <clears throat> he looking like a, a, a like a, uh, a a a stuffed pig, really. <laughs> you know, but he gets in there, gets to his job, all this stuff, and all of a sudden he gets up to uh to stand to uh make a comment and everybody's like whoa and he all he's the only one that didn't know what was going on so he looks down and the outfit that he was trying to hide underneath his his uh business suit he was wearing his business suit disappeared and so no matter what he was doing no matter what he was trying to do no matter how much he was trying to just do his career and just be focused on his career the call followed him okay what god wanted him to do followed him and so it got to a point to where he said man okay i give up i'll do it but then as he was doing this he faced opposition not just with his friends but also his family but at the end his purpose what he was called to do save the life of a town because he kept hearing that there was a flood coming there was a flood and folks thought he was crazy folks thought he was nuts he said man you ain't no rain and so it actually it actually started raining but then it stopped <laughs> But the reality was is that there was a levee that broke that caused a flood in this whole town where he lived, in this, this little neighborhood that flooded out the whole neighborhood. And if it wasn't for him building that boat, the people's lives, so many, a lot of people's lives would, be, would have been lost. But because he built the boat, because he said yes, people, he was able to get the people on the boat. He was able to get the people on the boat. And uh, they were able to ride the ways <laughs> and get to their place of safety. Now, there's so much in that movie. I love that movie. Every time I watch it, I just, I'm like, oh, powerful movie. Why? It's funny, but it's a powerful message. Because many of you today, you're called to do something very specific. And not only your life depends upon it, somebody else's life depends upon it. What you do, what you're called to do, is going to save so many lives. And I know that many of you are kind of are worried about the opposition. But let me tell you what the Lord says. The Lord told Joshua, he said, he said, uh, he said that, um, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Let me go to Joshua 1. And I'm going to close with this. Joshua chapter 1. Chapter one.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua chapter 1. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' sister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I'm giving you, giving to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards, towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all uh, the days of your life. That's a word of the Lord for you. If you're worried about opposition, it's the word of the Lord. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of a good courage. For to do this, people, for, for to do this, uh, people you for to do this people you should divide um for, uh, for you to do this people you shall divide as an inheritance uh, the land which i swore to their fathers to give them only <clears throat> only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Mo which moses my servant command commanded you do not turn from the right hand or to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go this book of the law, law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate and meditate in it day and night that you shall that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success have i not commanded you be strong and of a good courage do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Very powerful. He says, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. What you do, what you do is, is directly related to your life. It's time to build. Your life depends upon it. Your life. Everything, everything that represents, everything that makes up your life, it depends upon you being obedient right now. So let's pray. I want I want to pray for those right now who have been dealing with this struggle. Who have been dealing with this struggle of not stepping into fully what God has called you to do. I want to pray for those uh, tonight that have put, put other things ahead of the purpose and the plan of God. I want to pray for those tonight that said, God, not now. It's not time yet. It's not time to do this yet. Mm -hmm. And you may be sitting there because and you may have, may have not moved on it because you've had people in your life telling you, it's not time for this yet. But I'm here to declare to you that the Lord says it is time. It's time to move on it. Now, Father, I pray tonight. This is a heavy word. And I pray, Lord God, that even those who are uh, watching this live, God, and those who are watching this recording. Father, I pray that they will feel the weight of this word. Father, now I pray that you will stir up the urgency in your people, that now that they understand that their very life depends upon them making this, the decision, making the decision, making the choice to obey what you have spoken to them, to moving on what you have called them to do. I 
pray tonight, God, that they will move on it because of it. Because now they understand what's at stake, that they will just begin to move on it now without delay. Yes, Lord, as you give them direction, as you give them clarity, as you uh, speak to their hearts tonight. Father, I pray, Lord, for those who have stopped because of opposition. I pray for those tonight, God, who felt that uh, they had to stop because someone told them that it wasn't time. I pray tonight, God, that they would rise up and hear the voice of the Father saying, do it now. And not be afraid. Just as you told Joshua. Just as you told Joshua. No man. Shall be able to stand up against you. All the days of your life. And so father. I thank you Lord. That as you were with Moses. So you are. With your people today. As you were with Joshua. And Ezekiel. And Elisha. And Elijah. David, Samuel, Haggai, Zechariah. As you were with these great men of God, and as you was with Jesus, so are you with us. Father, give your people the strength to build tonight. Wherever you have called them to build, Lord. Father, I pray, God, that, that they will not let the dry season, Lord God, intimidate them, but they understand now. That they understand, Lord. That, Lord, that you caused the dryness, God, because the people would not hear your voice to rebuild. The people would not move on what they were supposed to do. Father, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus. That now, God, now that we have understanding, I pray that your people will rise. And yes, Lord, I pray, pray that your people will rise tonight. And move on the word. And as they go, Lord, as they move, Lord, there are things moving. <laughs> My goodness. Yes. And I hear the Lord saying that some of you are already moving and you don't think that things are moving. You don't think that things are happening. And I want to tell you tonight from the Lord that is that is not so. That there are things moving right now on your behalf. All all things are coming together. Everything is getting in place, coming together. Everything is coming together. Keep moving in the name of Jesus. Keep moving. Keep stepping. Don't stop in Jesus' mighty name. Don't stop in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, forgive us, Lord, for not moving on this. For, forgive us, Father, for just putting everything else and making everything else more important than what you want us to do, what you have called us to do because we've been so focused on the cares of life. We've been so focused on what we're going to eat and what we're going to wear and, and where we're going to live and, and Father has stopped us from walking out purpose. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for acting like the pagans, as you said, Jesus. The pagans worry about this stuff. Sinners worry about this stuff. Lord, may we seek your kingdom first and trust you, Lord, as we, as we begin to not just quote it, not just declare it, but move on it, that all things shall be added. Now, Father, I decree tonight Yes, Lord, that because we are being obedient to your word, that, Father, everything that we earn will not fall out of our pockets. Yes, Lord, that we will eat and have enough, drink and be full. And what we sow, it will bring back much fruit. Father, we decree tonight that because we are Obeying your word, God, that we will not just live in a moment and in the season of open heaven and not receive a drop of rain, God, but we will receive the rain and that we will be able to re receive the fruit from the ground. Yes, Lord, fruit, fruit from all that we have. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
Well, I pray that you are blessed by the word of the Lord and that uh, we're going to have this video up on the website here and playing all night <laughs> and uh, playing on and on to our next broadcast here. Uh, we were going to record this, this audio, but I forgot to click record, so I apologize for that. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure that God will probably have me teaching on this uh, again at another place at another time. Uh, but but anyway, um, but uh, we do have a video of this. We're going to put this up on our Facebook page, um, our ministry Facebook page that we have. Uh, you can uh, get to that by clicking on our prophetic company. Uh, which is under our vision tab and you would like to be a part of that be a part of our our ministry page uh, so we'll have the video up and so you can see it and uh, see it over and over and over and I encourage you I encourage you just to listen to the word get into your spirit and I really encourage you to wherever you are wherever you are wherever God is telling you to build a plant wherever he's telling you to do I would encourage you to read uh, the book of uh, Ezra and just be encouraged by that. Read the book of Haggai and be encouraged uh, by the word of the Lord. Uh, let that strengthen you tonight. OK, in Jesus name. Also, uh, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter uh, and um, as God directs you to be a blessing to us in the ministry here uh, by making a donation, whatever, whatever God puts in your spirit, whatever he puts in your heart uh, to sow. Uh, that you would do that in Jesus name be praying for us uh, praying the heart of God for us as we are um, making a travel and we we just thank God for the opportunities to be able to go out and uh, release the words of life share the word of the Lord uh, we are just so excited about that we know more is coming we know more is, we know more is coming and so uh, be praying with us uh, that the Lord will just continue to speak to our hearts and give us uh, um, give us a word uh, in season word uh, for the people of God. All right. Well, I believe that's all uh, that I want to share with you on uh, on this evening. Thank you for joining me once again. And this is Apostle Brian uh, signing off here and uh, we speak blessings and uh, peace to you. Have a great evening. Bye bye.